Okay, y'all. This part of the video is for Fred. Now, he's asked me, y'all, for probably more than a year to show me threading my machine. Now, why that's so interesting to him, I'm not sure. But I kept telling him I would and kept telling him I would and I thought I'd get somebody to help me with it so you could really see what I'm doing. But I just haven't been able to do that. So, I'm going to do the best I can. Now, I'm working on uh, my chair covers. And um, my phone was just about dead, so I was using my um, tablet. But I think my phone has enough juice in it to um, do this, at least do, say, part one. But anyway, I'm using this color thread. I already had it on my machine, and there's a bobbin in there that matches it. And you can see, I mean, anyway, you're not going to be able to see it at all. Okay, so first of all, you put your thread up here on one of these spools. And then you go over here, and you thread it through this little gizmo right here. And then you go down in this slot and back up in this one. Now you have to position this little arm right here. See, you can't even see it, y'all. This is not even, you know, this is not even going to show anybody. Come on up here just a little more. Um, and then once you have that hooked in that little hook right there, you come down here and then you wrap it around in that little uh, hook right there. I don't know what else to call it. Now then, let me see if that's cut off right. Yeah, it looks pretty good. You want to make sure that the end of your thread is as pointy or blunt as you can get it. So now I am going, now I'm going to get my head in the way, y'all. I have to turn it this way so I can try to thread. Ah, look at that. I got it on the first try. Woohoo! I am loving that. Okay, now, I'm going to raise up the foot, and if I didn't already have my bobbin thread through here, then y'all know what you do is you just stick your needle down in there, and when you raise it back up, it catches on your bobbin thread and brings it up. So... That's it, sweetie. I mean, that is it. There, there. It's not, you know, like rocket science or anything. So, what I'm going to do is, the lighting in here is not very good. If y'all hear a big crash, don't let it scare you like it scared me. I told y'all they are taking our swimming pool completely out. So the big uh, crashes, that's where they're tearing up that swimming pool and they're throwing big chunks of it into this huge dump truck. So I don't live in a, you know, wild, dangerous park, okay? Now then, I cut my fabric... Um, 25 inches long. Now, I only ended up with a selvage on one side. So, what I'm going to do, because this fabric, it ravels, or I should say unravels, really easily. And there's three sides that I'm going to have to, um him but I mean when they did those uh, chair pads originally oh my finger got a cramp oh that's better 
anyway, when they did those originally, that fabric is like, um, it's a thicker fabric. It's, it's not like brocade. It's not as thick as sailcloth. I knew what it was a minute ago. Anyway, it's a thicker fabric, okay? And they did not sew any of their edges. And it hasn't unraveled, but this stuff does. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put it under a little bit and then a little bit more. And then that way, um, when I start pulling it together around the seat, it's not gonna be that unravely stringy look, which I know it's gonna be on the bottom and it shouldn't really matter. In fact, really the correct way to do this would have been to take all the staples out of that fabric and laid it down on top of your fabric to get the really correct measurement. But what I did is I cut the fabric a little bit bigger because I did want to make those little hems around the three edges. So I think I gave myself enough. I think it, I cut them um, 25, 25 and a half, the pieces that big. And it was rectangular piece, so um, they weren't cut exact, they're not cut in a circle, that's for sure. Oh. Huh. Sometimes if you just talk out loud, that's why I do it all. I talk to myself, I talk to Hazel, all the time. Hmm. I need to cut this fabric in a circle or else because it's more of a square or a rectangle then I'm going to have all that now see I'm going to tell y'all <laughs> I'm going to tell y'all the other day when my camera was backwards how does it do that it was like my stove was on the other side of the refrigerator it's just, it's just crazy. I haven't been able to go to Best Buy to get the little geeks there to show Grandma how, I can call myself Grandma now, to show me why is it doing that and how do I fix it. And then I would have to make notes in my phone note app so that I could remember. But, um... It is so crazy, y'all. You would think that I had never made any chicken and dumplings in my life. And really, I have. I've made them out of Bisquick. I've made them out of biscuits. I've made them uh, from scratch. And um, did I remember that you had to cover the pot? No, but several of y'all in your comments told me you need to cover the pot. <laughs> I think really y'all, I need to put my phone number out there because that way when I'm doing something and I'm making the video, uh, well, that's not going to work either because I make the video and then I make it public, y'all. I'm going to have to start having somebody sitting here with me that has more than one brain cell that can say, okay, Deb, you're making this video, but uh, you do know you got to put the lid on the pot so your dumplings will cook correctly. Y'all, I don't know how you follow me. I'm really, I'm serious. I know it's funny, but I don't know how y'all do it. I really don't. No wonder you're sitting down drinking coffee when you're watching my videos or you're in bed. I, I get that. And I love it that I can put y'all to sleep. <laughs> okay, y'all. 
I'm so glad I caught this myself before y'all told me it's what I needed to do. So this is obviously gonna be in uh, more than one part, okay? And if I don't remember to hook them together, I'll try to remember to put uh, chair seats one, chair seats two, chair seats three. And um, I hope it doesn't take longer than that. So I'm gonna cut this off and I am going to cut my fabric in a circle. And that's what I was going to say. You remove, that's what they say. If you're going to upholster something, if you um, have a dress you like. I remember this from when I was a kid. My grandmother would either make a pattern out of newspaper or whatever but if she had a favorite dress or a dress like I had that was my favorite she made me, you just take that sucker apart and lay it down and on top of your other fabric and you just, you know, wrong sides together, of course, and you just make a pattern. And that's exactly, I looked at some videos on how to upholster a chair not in this lifetime, not if I live to be 120, and we know that's not going to happen. But I'm telling you, that's what they say to do. Take the fabric off of your piece of furniture and lay it down on top of the new fabric to make your pattern. So it'll fit perfect. Well, y'all know I can't uh, cut a straight line anyway. And it's going to be really funny for me to try to cut a circle. There's a way to do that. Do y'all remember how it is? You fold it in half. Let me see. You fold it. You, you fold your fabric in half like this. And then you just... You're just cut it around like that and when you open it up you have a circle now y'all i can't afford to screw this up because i just have enough fabric and i'm telling you i really like this fabric y'all it's so bright and it's so pretty and it goes so good with my red table legs so I'm going to turn this video off for right now, and I am not going to let you see me butcher this fabric, butcher this fabric, but I'm going to try to think about this. And here's the terrible thing. When I put this video out, you guys are going to be telling me exactly how I should have done it. I wish one of y'all was here. Anyway, I'm going to do the very best that I can with my one brain cell, and it'll just have to be good enough. So I'll talk to y'all later. Bye now.